and the, early, and the early reading, you're exactly right. We measure in kindergarten and first grade with what we call DIBBLES, dynamic indicators, the basic early literacy. We diagnose reading with something called phonological awareness test so that those kids that are struggling in K-1, we go out <coughs> with specific phonic skills for those kids so that they can become decoders and can become readers. Um, I think you would be amazed if you were around our buildings in the, the preschools through the eighth grade, both elementary buildings and the middle school building, about the energy that's put into the, the kids that struggle with their reading. I interrupted you. That's fine. Uh, who says the goals? Us or is it a standard? It's a, it's a norm reference. Basic reading inventory is a norm reference okay. um, assessment, and so those are norm referenced, meaning that they were probably about 10,000 students, I think it was, 10 or 12,000. And they took a look at kids and said, okay, if they read like X in the fall, they got to read like X as far as rate was concerned. Comprehension, we always want to be 85% higher. Now, well, well, on the yeah. comprehension part, I guess my question is, um, how many words are in a passage that they get to read? They only get to read for a minute. So how many words are in a passage? No, they, they read more than a minute. Oh. They, they read the two or three paragraphs, and if it takes them four minutes or if it takes them two minutes, okay. we time them. Okay. And then we have a little calculation we do to convert. Okay, because that's my question was, yeah. it, it, comprehension is going to fail if you get shut off after a minute no. and you only read half the story, you can't answer the last yeah, part. We part. convert it to words correct for a okay. minute, but they read the entire passage. Okay. Yeah. All right. And Dave, you're right on with, I mean, re reading is extremely important, and that's why you hear words like Quim and Corey, you know, and We're, second chance reading. And second chance reading. I mean, we are trying to implement reading as much as we can in all of our content areas. So we are working in reading instruction in social studies and in science and even in math. You look at an ITBS test, what is that test? That, it's a reading test. You have to be able to read everything. The only place that you really don't have to read necessarily is math computation problems. And that's a reading in itself. You know, so. Well, I really praise and praise parents that spend time at the age of two and three and four. <clears throat> it's such an asset to the school system and to the child because they just take off like a rock. You can tell the difference. You yeah. can tell the difference there. Mm -hmm. and, and, uh, and there are some programs out there that should look into some. Have we compared the uh, comprehension scores with like what their other scores are, like on their ITBS? I would assume the eighth graders who scored pretty low on comprehension probably also scored pretty low on their ITBSs. Would that be a fair statement? Yeah, it's very accurate. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So this is a good litmus test yeah. for yeah. It's a very ITBS. High yeah. Yeah. So you got to be able to comprehend to take basic tests. And exactly. What we find, Doug, on our ITBS and ITED is we have a group of kids that don't read, that read pretty slowly, but they're very accurate and they understand. So they may answer two-thirds of the questions on their ITBS reading test or science or social studies, but they get all, they get all of them right. I mean, they literally miss nothing. They just can't. They don't, they don't have the stamina or the speed to get through the test. We see kids that uh, on the very top end who read fluently, understand, who complete the test, have some time left over, and do well. We see kids who are frustrated by that whole thing, and they, some of them just honestly quit. I mean, they'll get partway through a pa read a passage and a half, and they just are like, oh my gosh, you know, I've got another 35 minutes of this, and it's just such a slug for them. So there's a lot of um, data to back up fluency, which is when I can read more accurately and with a little bit of speed, for one thing, passages make more sense to me. If any of you can remember listening to a, a first grade, somebody just learning to read, you might have even known what the story was, but you'd have never understood it if you hadn't already known because they were, they, they're word readers at first. They're not fluent, they don't phrase, they don't recognize punctuation. If it's a question, they don't raise their voice at the end of it, and you're like, holy cow, what in the world did they just read? Well, kids that read like that, and you know, silently, that makes no sense to them then. So, uh, fluency is one of the most ignored um, strategies in reading, and in the state of Iowa, that's been a huge effort by the Department of Ed is to help schools understand. It's really kind of a easy thing to change that makes the world a difference in comprehension. So, one thing that um, didn't when we got lost out in that grant, 
try to get in for, what is it, four-year-olds? Chris program. Chris program. That would be an asset to helping the reading program because we'd start them. If the parents didn't do it, we could really push them. Actually, we're, we're implementing the entire curriculum that the grant requires. Um, we implemented part of it, this current, um, the 07 08 school year, and we'll fully implement that curriculum in 08 09. So we won't have the funding, but we're doing just what the grant's requiring. So our students will, at the district's expense, but the, the students will not miss out on anything that a school district who got the grant would have.